Okay, guys, third time's the charm. I am very optimistic we will get Dr. Zia here um, and get this IG Live going for you guys. Um, again, technical issues. There we go. There she is. Okay, let's see. Let's see. We'll see if we can get her here on the screen and get, get this going for you guys. I'm, I apologize for the delay. Hi, Hi guys. Hi, yeah. How are you? About the, about the technical issues. Yeah. No, no worries. No worries. Thank you for being on today. I'm glad we could figure this out. Thank you so much. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and share with my audience a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, where you practice, and what you do. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and for the invite to be an IG Live guest on your um, on your account. Um, I'm Subela Zia. I'm a, a pulmonary critical care and sleep physician based in Bay Area, California. Okay. I am the founder and CEO of a healthcare uh, telehealth company called Telemedora, and our focus currently is on improving sleep in the world so we are focused on sleep in, uh, sleep apnea improve uh, insomnia and issues like that right now and we do provide wonderful so i have a, a good friend of mine she talks about sleep as the forgotten pillar of health um, and i think that we as physicians really don't talk enough about people's sleep patterns and sleep disturbances and so I was really happy to have you on today to ask you a few questions, um, specifically as it pertains to sleep medicine and how it can impact fertility. So I wanted to start first by just defining what is a sleep disturbance? Yeah, so any changes in the sleep pattern or in the, uh, in the sleep uh, duration or quality that can impact your health or your uh, daytime routine or daytime functionality is a sleep disturbance. So sleep disturbance is a very broad term. So okay. just like health issues. So, <laughs> so, sure, sure, um, sure. And there's, there so are myriad of... It's any, change, any change to your sleep pattern that can impact your the quality and quantity of your sleep. Correct. Okay, okay interesting and so what types of sleep disturbances are there because i know i i know of two i know some people have difficulty falling asleep and then some people have difficulty staying asleep so they wake up maybe once or twice in the in the evenings um, are there any other types of sleep disturbances correct there are um, in many more types of sleep disturbances some um so what you described was two types of insomnia sleep onset insomnia, which is the difficulty falling asleep for more than three months, resulting in the daytime uh, functionality impact or mm -hmm. the routine of their lives. And the other is the difficulty staying asleep, which is the uh, sleep maintenance insomnia. Then there are, so those are the two uh, disorders, but then there are other things like circadian rhythm disorders for night shift workers, uh, uh, which include jet lags as well when healthy people are traveling to other time zone. And then um, a very common sleep disorder called uh, sleep apnea, which can lead to the sleep disturbance. Restless leg uh, syndromes, especially in females who are iron deficient or, um, and who are childbearing age, or any kind of other parasomnias, meaning abnormal sleep behaviors, they can all, and, and much more. So they can all be sure. part of the sleep disturbance and sleep disorders. Understood, understood. So, so really it, it contains a wide array of sleep disturbances. Um, so many of these I think are oftentimes overlooked or maybe minimized um, in the day-to-day -day living uh, of our society. Um, we're such a go, 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 you know, society. We suffer from a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out and whatnot. And so that definitely um, can play into that. I know for myself, um, my patient population, I have a lot of night shift workers. 
I have a lot of people that travel for work, so they're flipping back and forth between time zones a lot. Um, and then I, you know, in general, infertility tends to be associated with increased risks of, infert of anxiety and depression, um, which can absolutely impact sleep. Yes. But I'm curious, I'm curious what you can tell us about the impact, and it may be different depending on the type of sleep disturbance, but the impact of sleep disturbances on a patient's fertility, both male and female. Absolutely. So for the males, it can cause untreated obstructive sleep apnea has been shown to cause a decreased sexual desire as well as uh, erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. it, and uh, it can also lead to increase in the anxiety and depression. And that just mars the whole um, a whole environment around them. It impacts others, impacts their family, their um, uh, families as well. And for females, again, there is a decreased libido. There can be there. Sometimes it also leads to increasing anxiety and depression. Some people are so fearful by the time their bedtime comes that, oh, that, that they will have to go through the same struggle to fall asleep or to stay asleep. So that also, uh, uh, that also leads to that. And then sleep deprivation has been shown to impact uh, fertility as well, which uh, due to the hormonal imbalance. Um, also, there have been studies uh, that uh, patients with obstructive sleep apnea, they were found to have, uh, especially females with an, an obstructive sleep apnea were found to be more infertile as compared to those without that. So timely recognition is, uh, is needed for that. Uh, also, there are other, other things that can cause all these infertility uh, issues which are related to sleep disorders and which go undiagnosed. Um, some of them are um, any kind of uh, abnormal sleep pattern or not having a consistent sleep routine that impacts the hormonal balance of the body because certain hormones get released at certain time. Everything, our bodies go by clockwork. So there is an internal body clock, which is called circadian rhythm. And then there's a, a sleep clock, which goes hand in hand with that. So circadian rhythm um, is responsible for when are we going to go to the bathroom in the morning? When are we going to, um, when are we going to have uh, uh, more sleepiness? And when are we going to be more alert and active? Uh, some people are early morning, early morning larks, and some people are night owls. So when are um, when are we going to be better test takers and stuff like that? Okay. Um, so, so is that a genetic thing in terms of being a morning person versus a night owl? It can it can be it can be uh, both. So some people uh, some people are able to. Uh, since childhood, they perform better in the morning. This is how they train their, they have trained their circadian rhythm, and they have also trained their sleep clock as well. But when they go, remember how we went into residency and we were all required to do night floats? Yep. So one week night floats on one, and then the lovely, and then the right next day, we would be, we would go to sleep. We were required to go to sleep and report the next day for the morning shift. So... <laughs> That, that's how and how the military recruits they also train their circadian rhythm so circadian rhythm and the sleep clock is something that you can um, train your body to you do not have if somebody is an early morning person and needs to work in a night shift they can train their body uh, for that by following certain things so for the person for the average person so so not somebody who travels a lot for work not somebody who's a night shift worker but for the average person what are some general recommendations for the nighttime routine yeah so in order to have a good sleep um sleep uh, um you have to follow a sleep hygiene, which is, you know, how you, ha in order to have a healthy body, you have to follow personal hygiene in order to have a healthy dental, uh, uh, heavy, healthy teeth, you have to follow dental hygiene. So in order to have a great sleep with good quality and good duration, you have to follow sleep hygiene, which has several components in it. Number one is to make sure that your sleep schedule is consistent. 
consistency matters when it comes to sleep. Um, then number two is that we have to make sure that the sleep environment is safe, quiet, dark, and is electronic device free. We have to make it, um, uh, we have to make sure that we're not using our devices to f help us fall asleep because, uh, or we are not watching TV to help us fall asleep because we, as Americans, the study just came out, they did a survey on, on thousands of adult Americans and they saw, uh, to your point, Dr. Sueldo, that Americans were not prioritizing sleep. 88% of Americans, even when they had the opportunity to sleep, they were engaged in watching um, TV, uh, TV. they are catching up on their lives, um, on their Netflix and stuff like that. So they were are playing video games. Uh, so those things, um, um, they uh, emit blue light and those like, and that affects our sleep cycle negatively. Other things that we have to make sure that we, we always in, incorporate exercise in our daily routine so that and the exercise should not be too close to the bedtime. Usually exercise, uh, people who exercise at least uh, six hours before their bedtime are able to sleep. But if somebody exercises right to, uh, um, one hour before their bedtime, they will still be very active from the ex exercise. Mm -hmm. Also, the, um, also um, other um, social habits matter. Um, for instance, nicotine. People who are, are using nicotine in any form, they are at higher risk of having impact on their sleep. Then the caffeinated beverages. Some people uh, are so uh, in; they are so used to be an energy bunny. They keep drinking their caffeinated beverages without taking into account that oh, by the way, this is that is the amount of ca caffeine that you are putting in uh, in your body. So usually we advise people not to drink too close to the bedtime. Six hours before the bedtime, um, you, they should stop using the caffeine because it it lingers on in the body um most of the alcohol, because alcohol is so common in our society absolutely. especially the hour or a glass of yes. wine with dinner I, I was getting there absolutely yes that's a great question actually i see so many patients who have resorted to using alcohol as their sleep aid mm -hmm. um and it um Alcohol does help people to fall asleep, but it is a cause of significant sleep fragmentation. Alcohol has the tendency to uh, increase the severity of sleep apnea by, by, by a lot. Uh, so somebody who is mild can uh, go, become severe after they drink alcohol. And uh, let's say if they stop breathing 18, uh, if, if they stop breathing eight times an hour, normal should be less than five. If um, but if they stop breathing eight times an hour and have other other um, signs and symptoms, they are mild. But but when they drink that night and they go to bed that night, they may be able to fall asleep quickly. But the, they they are going to have uh, increased number of times when they their oxygen flow in the body will be adversely and negatively impacted to a degree that can um, be hazardous for them. So they can, they can stop breathing more than 30 times an hour, which is severe right. uh, sleep apnea and so on and so, so forth. So another question I have that I get pretty commonly now um, with my patients is either the wife or the partner um, is using CBD gummies or you know, smoking or whatnot as a sleep aid. Um, can you just briefly speak to that? Absolutely. So uh, there is no data um, at this point in order to support the use of uh, uh, CBD gummies in order to fall asleep. Uh, there have been um, uh, there have been patients who have resorted to using it as an as, as a pain medication. There there is some data on that, but not uh, when we are uh, trying to fall asleep. There, there is, uh, um, to the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, mar uh, marijuana or the C CBD gummies are uh, are not the way to go. Okay, okay. And then my last question before I let you go: um, When should somebody see a sleep specialist? So, what are some of the 
criteria or some of the situations where somebody might benefit from a sleep medicine specialist. And for me, that the stage of life that I'm in, um, you know, I have very young children, they don't sleep well. And so sleep medicine, actually, my older son had severe sleep apnea, I had to have surgery. Um, so sleep medicine was something that came into my life a little bit by necessity. Um, but otherwise, I don't think it's something that even myself as a physician was really aware of as something to explore. So I think it's really important for the audience in terms of, you know, when, when would be a time when I think, you know what, I should probably see a sleep specialist. Yes. Dr. Sueldo, you're, uh, you're absolutely right that uh, sleep gets ignored, like, some, uh, like you mentioned in the, uh, in the earlier part of your live stream. And that's why now American uh, Health Association has come out based on all the research behind the sleep health and the, car the heart health, that it is the life's eight, eight essentials. So there are uh, several things that are important for life, like drinking good water, exercise, um, maintaining, um, um, maintaining a smoke-free life, and so on and so forth. And sleep, uh, having a great sleep health also matters. So now more and more uh, people are recognizing that. And with their smartwatches, we have seen increased awareness about the uh, way people are sleeping. I'm not saying that they are accurate or, or uh, inaccurate. I'm just saying that there's more awareness. So whenever people are having difficulty in falling asleep or, um, or difficulty in maintaining their sleep that is uh, impacting their health negatively, or when they are being told that, hey, you have, uh, uh, you, you snore loud, loudly, you, have, you are struggling to remember things during the daytime, uh, or you, uh, our patients are being forget, forgetful about, oh, where did I keep, uh, put, my, uh, put my keys? So, or, or they, they get uh, uh, fatigue, which is, which despite doing everything they, that they are doing, um, it, it is lingering on and on. Or they have a family history of uh, sleep apnea and they, they are being told about those things that, hey, you stopped breathing in the middle of the night. I heard that you were snorting. Was it a snorting or was it, were you gasping? Because when we are sleeping, we, are, we don't know what our sleep behaviors what are we doing but our bed partners are a great source of uh, a great source to let us know sometimes the symptoms are also not related to sleep uh, we we see patients from migraine clinics or we see um, because they have uh, morning headaches or we see patients from um, urology clinic uh, that I have seen patients from the urology clinic that j j got sent for nocturia because they cannot just stop peeing in the middle of the night and they have no diabetes. So then those are the symptoms to be mindful about. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. No, this has been super helpful. I feel like I have about five more questions to ask you. Uh, I, <laughs> if you have time, I'm yours. Sorry, I just started late. Um, no, no, that's okay. Um, you know, you, you covered so many things there. So one is, you know, the nocturia and getting up to, to the bathroom um, overnight. What are some, you know, as far as like restricting fluids or what are some of the things that people can do um, to help mitigate that before they get to the sleep specialist? Absolutely. So um, sometimes like uh, people people, by the time they get home, they realize that, oh, today I did not drink any water. And then they start drinking water <laughs> to catch up on their fluid intake. And then by the time they get done, it's close to bedtime. So restricting fluid intake, if um, uh, at least three hours before their bedtime has shown uh, to help. Also, some people, when they and as part of their winding down, I know we have touched on this before, uh, but as part of their winding down, they drink wine or uh, so that also increases their uh, nocturia or they, they, um, they, uh, they think that it's a beer, it's just a beer, but it's never just a beer that leads to one thing after the other. So limiting alcohol intake um, at least a few hours before the bedtime has shown to help improve the amount of times that people have to um, fragment their sleep and get up and go to the bathroom. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, Dr. Zia, where can you said you're in the Bay Area? Where can people find you? How can they work with you? Well, 
Wonderful. Thank you. So we are, uh, uh, so although I'm based out of Bay Area, I do see uh, patients virtually. So I, uh, if there are patients who are based out of California, Illinois, Georgia, Pennsylvania, or uh, Indiana, they can find me online at uh, www.telemedora, T-E-L-E-M-E-D-O-R-A dot com. Or they can call us at 650-687-7368 and uh, learn more about us. And we'll be happy to work with them. Okay, and I'll be sure to add that in the comments um, in the caption uh, under this live. Dr. Zia, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for the light. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.